So question wise, Amanda Batten uh, asked on Facebook about exercise and where I'm at with uh, all of that. I'll have a huge update on that next week. Uh, literally today, we just finalized a, a deal with Ascendo Fitness. So I have a trainer there and I'm going to be working out there. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. A very positive meeting. They're completely uh, on board with everything that I've done so far. They understand kind of why I'm doing this and they get that I'm doing it publicly and they get that, uh, you know, coming into this, uh, that exercise part is even, you know, more new to me than, uh, than the food you know was I'm more ignorant of all of that than even I was about basic uh, nutrition so really really looking forward to that scared the hell by the entire thing I mean you yeah, that doesn't fit my old life at all you know the the me of two months ago would have laughed at that and did laugh at that as my friends uh, you know would join gyms and go into these programs and all that it wasn't something that that entered and you know I could ever imagine me doing so uh, I'm gonna get started with them literally uh, later today on Friday and uh, then we'll start off a full program. On Monday, you're gonna get to meet the gang down there at Ascendo. You'll meet uh, the trainer that I got. You'll see the kind of stuff they got me doing as I progress. But I mean, I guess the short answer to your question is what have I done so far on my own? Uh, I followed the, uh, the simple advice that I got from the Surgical Weight Loss Center, which was as soon after surgery as possible to just get used to moving and to try to move at least 15 minutes a day in the beginning and uh, make your way up to 30. So my starting point with the trainer is that I can do about 30 minutes of cardio now in a row and still kind of have control of myself. I can still breathe. I can still talk. You know, I've seen a huge difference in that. I mean, 80 pounds is only 80 pounds and I still have a long way to go. But at the same time, 80 pounds is a huge amount of weight to lose. And the range that that's given me, the mobility that that's given me and the energy that I get from that, I feel more prepared now to take on, you know, real exercise than I did you know, even a week ago or two weeks ago. And if I'm doing this right and I continue to lose uh, weight, uh, even at a slower rate than I am right now, when I actually hit a plateau uh, of, of steady loss around two pounds a week, uh, you'll still be able to feel it. That's what they tell me. I'll still be able to feel the difference uh, and, and that it should get easier. Moving around should get easier. And uh, that's encouraging because every day I do notice that. It, like Those are those non-scale victories I talk about. Uh, you know, 80 pounds is great, but the fact that little things in my life are changing every day, that's even better and you know adding a gym is just one more thing and those milestones will become more obvious at the gym you know what how long you're able to do uh, one particular piece of cardio when you're able to move on to a new machine they have this uh, I didn't even know they existed but basically it's like a, a treadmill with stairs I basically cried when I saw it today um, so I'm you know God knows when they'll torture me with that but that right now in my head that seems like an impossibility because stairs still kind of kind of scare me so we'll see how that goes Andrew Tyne asked if I've completely run out of clothes yet. Uh, I'm getting there, Andrew. <laughs> One of the things about getting fat in the first place is that you start to buy clothes that are much bigger than you need them to be anyway. And you kind of grow into them without realizing. So, you know, I probably went from regularly buying three X's to buying fives and sixes without even, you know, without needing them. And those once upon a time were really big on me. And, uh, and then I grew into them. And now what I find is that as I'm dropping weight now, uh, they're all becoming, you know, a little bit bigger. But it is getting laughable. I was at the Waterford Hospital for Admin Assistance Day. We were delivering flowers, me and Nikki uh, uh, Sullivan that I do the morning show with uh, at the Eagle. And uh, I'm holding the camera and, and Nikki's kind of interviewing this nurse, Simone, hey Simone, who, uh, who won uh, one of the uh, deliveries uh, for Admin Week. Uh, and all of her friends that also work in the hospital kind of gathered behind her. So the entire time that I'm holding the camera on Simone and Nikki's talking to her, the only thing I'm thinking is that my pants are, you know, dropping behind me. So all of that is new. I, I finally had to break down literally just like an hour ago and buy a new belt. Uh, what I found was, as cool as it was as an incentive to keep the belt that, I, that I've been wearing all along, as my waist has gone from a 52 down to... I'm, I'm saying 45, because 46 right now are too big and 44 are still a little too tight, so I'm stuck in like an in-between zone right now. But, uh, so anyway, at the very least, I bought a belt that, that fits, but is a lot thinner. It's not as heavy, because I really do think the belt I have now with is, is pulling my pants down. So anyway, Andrew, slowly but surely, I'm doing my best not to spend money on a bunch of clothes now, because if everything goes as planned, I'll, I'll keep outgrowing them as we go. I'd rather walk around and look like a fool in big clothes than walk around the way that I used to. So we'll we'll see how all that comes together. Cindy McLean asked about food costs. How much am I spending now versus how much was I spending when I was eating out all the time and buying unhealthy food? And Cindy, I put a lot of thought into this and we're gonna do a whole special video on this in a week or two. And we're gonna just compare a grocery bill. What was I buying before? What was I buying now? Uh, how much was I uh, spending on fast food? That's a really big issue. And in fact, uh, as, as I've talked about in other videos, 
it may have been you know just you know February January February of this year that I started seriously considering uh, you know doing something drastic like weight loss surgery but it was really the end of last summer that I started making uh, changes uh, in my life and one of those changes while I was at my brother's place in Fredericton was going through my online banking and just seeing how much money I was spending at fast food joints in the first place and I honestly don't remember the number but in in one year it was more than three thousand dollars and that's that's ridiculous I mean that's a that's not a small percentage of my in income. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll do that in a separate blog. That's a really interesting question. And honestly, I don't really know the answer yet. So I want to find out. And when I do, we'll, uh, we'll do a whole entry on it. Uh, Pam Howard asked about uh, eating healthy when out with friends. Pam, I have no idea. Because right now, uh, I am on such a unique diet that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. It's still trying to come with terms with what I can actually get in me that uh, I'm just not. I'm not tempting it. You know, uh, it'll be probably years before I'm in a restaurant uh, and comfortable. Um, you know, the, the best thing for me to do right now is remain in complete control of my choices and I give that luxury up the minute I go to someone else's house without telling them about my specialties or um, you know, going to a restaurant without knowing in advance that there is something on the appetizer menu that I can make a meal out of. Those are risks that I'm not, at this point, I'm certainly not taking. You know, ask me again in a month or two and maybe it'll be different. But uh, but right now, it really is, it's, it's kind of like a every man for himself, take care of yourself kind of thing. And that means really preparing all of my own food. I'm not I'm not really trusting anyone else with it at this point. That way I'm, I'm fully accountable for what every bite is if I'm the guy who, who put it together. Uh, the next question was uh, from Leah Boyd, just uh, how are you feeling in general? And that is a really great question because I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, honestly. Every day is so different now, energy-wise and mood-wise and all of that, that you don't spend a lot of time uh, really connected to how you feel. And I absolutely think that's different from before. I think that anyone who finds themselves in a position where they overeat, some level of that is emotional. and. You know, when we talk about that, I think Oprah put in her head that uh, that means you're sitting in your closet crying, eating Twinkies. But emotional eating isn't just negative, it's positive as well. You do something good, right? A kid, a kid grades, so we get them ice cream. You know, you have a good day at work, you land a new project, you get a good deal. You make it to Friday and without pulling your hair out and you reward yourself by grabbing a pizza on the way home. So emotional eating doesn't necessarily mean depressed, sad eating. Emotional eating means connecting what you want to put in your body in that moment to how you're feeling. So I'm trying less and less to worry about how I feel and spend more time worrying about how I'm doing. And Leah, I think I'm, I'm doing well. And uh, I do think that in those moments when I think about it, I do think I'm, I'm feeling okay too. And finally, the last question from Kelly McIsaac was about the people in your life, cheerleaders versus naysayers. Again, Kelly, I don't have an answer because the most amazing thing since I started all of this is that I haven't run into a naysayer. And that's astonishing to me when you consider that uh, this really took on a life of its own, completely different from what I had thought, you know, I knew that we'd be doing the videos, I knew we'd be doing the blog for the year. It was all part of the deal when I decided on the surgery, but uh, the idea that, uh, you know, my weight would, you know, that number, that, that number of starting out of 460, uh, that would talk about that on the radio, or that that would end up on the cover of the Cape Breton Post, those aren't things that I really had considered before making a choice because no one knew that those opportunities uh, were going to come. I, an opportunity to, to share my story with even more people than just those of you who, who find us here on the Eagle website. So um, the most amazing thing through all of that has been that through online comments where you constantly expect the worst, uh, where the, you know, the phone at the radio station were just as many... Um, how can I put it politely? Where just as many people you'd rather not hear from normally call you as uh, as much as people that you do want to hear from or who have nice things to say or who have constructive criticism to say versus just complaining. So I was ready for the worst. I had my helmet on and strapped in, ready to go for this thing to, to kind of fall off the rails from the get-go. And everybody, like people in stores that I don't even know, all of you online, everyone that I work with, because they're going through this with me. I mean, this is just as much a part of Jay Bedford and Nikki's life as it is mine because they got to put up with me on air every day. They They've been phenomenal and friends and family I'd be lost without because there was a lot of confusion heading into this, a lot of education for everybody about what I was going to be getting into and uh, for everyone to have the patience and stick around and learn with me through this whole thing and then support me once they saw as well that it was really what I wanted and that it really was the right decision for me. You can't beat it any better than that. The only thing I can say is that if I do encounter an naysayer, they aren't going to be in my life for long. One of the worst things you can do is have people around you who, who aren't thinking of your best interest and aren't supporting you at any given moment. Um, I don't have that problem. The fact that you're watching this video is, is proof of that. So 
So a huge thank you to all of you who continue to support. Send your questions and emails through eagle1035.com, and uh, we'll be back again with you next week.